Are you thinking you might have symptoms of post-infectious IBS? We're going to discuss what post-infectious IBS is and what prevents the body, what are the mechanisms involved that trigger this process, and what prevents the body from getting back to normal quickly. If this is something that interests you, keep watching. We're going to get into the details. We're all about helping you gain a deeper understanding of your health and what's going on with your body. Hopefully this video gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing this content, uh, I get a statistic wrong or the name of something wrong, and almost always there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog. You can find it there. Uh, those oftentimes go into a little bit more detail than the, um, than the videos do as well. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And um, it does take you know considerable effort to produce this content. So if you're liking the information, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have questions about any of the content, please ask it in the comment section uh, here or on the blog. Uh, that's why I'm producing the information for you to gain that deeper understanding. So ask the questions if you have them. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. So what is post-infectious IBS? So basically it's just what it sounds. It is IBS or irritable bowel syndrome following some kind of infection. But it's not just any infection. It's an infection in the small intestine or the intestines uh, following like, you know, food poisoning uh, from, a from a bad restaurant, norovirus, maybe someone was sick themselves and it got into the food, uh, traveler's diarrhea, the flu, um, all these can lead to this post-infectious state. Basically what happens is the bugs get into the digestive tract um, and trigger this inflammation. And for whatever reason, uh, in certain people, they don't get over the infection. They don't get over it and it, it leads to these chronic digestive symptoms. And it seems that some people are more susceptible to it. So it's not just the, you know, the, um, infection itself, but it's infection on top of a susceptible individual because a lot of people have had uh, gastroenteritis or, you know, traveler's diarrhea and are fine afterwards. So, um, so we want to look at some of the uh, mechanisms involved and that will kind of lead to, you know, maybe some, some ways that you can get over it uh, as quickly as possible. And um, basically, you know, it can, for some people, take just a few weeks. Other times it takes months, years, and sometimes people don't get over it at all. Um, and so basically it's this inflammation. Um, the infection triggers the inflammation in the body. The body's not able to recover from this inflammation. It's in a chronic inflamed state. So we want to look at some of the mechanisms involved with that and uh, basically what prevents the digestive tract from getting back to normal quickly. So what's going on there is the natural inflammatory process that's built in within the body is not um, uh, being triggered properly. So when we have inflammation in our body, it's uh, a natural repair process for damaged tissues. So there's some sort of uh, insult to the tissues that uh, creates the inflammatory cascade um, and the immune system gets triggered to come in and repair that tissue. Built within that process is a um, shutoff valve or a shutoff uh, for the inflammation. Uh, what part of the process uh, when you have chronic inflammation, whether it's in your intestines or your joints, is that natural shutoff process is not getting triggered. This is the current thinking on, you know, why that occurs. Or there's some sort of chronic, you know, pathology there that's still going on. But in the sense that the uh, <clears throat> the former, the natural process isn't getting triggered, um, you're supposed to have like a, a inflammation repair shutoff. And instead of doing this, we have inflammation repair inflammation again. So built within the inflammation process, there's actually some damage that does occur to the tissues. So when during the repair process, you can re-trigger the inflammation. So instead of it getting shut off, it's, you know, I guess it should be, you know, more linear inflammation uh, repair and then shut off but it's going in a circle. So you get this chronic kind of reaction and uh, part of in your intestines, when you have inflammation, uh, what happens is the intestinal lining opens up. And um, if these are your uh, digestive cells, you get these uh, 
gap junctions that basically allow those intestinal cells to open and close. And when you have inflammation, uh, they basically water comes in through these gap junctions and it basically pushes the uh, whatever's causing that inflammation out. Um, and that's, uh, that's why you get diarrhea from these bugs or whatever the trigger is. And um, <clears throat> so when your immune system or your, your uh, body's detecting some inflammation in there, it's going to cause those gap junctions to open up like that. Now, when it's chronic inflammation like that, these gap junctions get uh, degraded and uh, can lead to some problems uh, where they don't get repaired properly and it just sort of stays open. Um, and then other things can kind of come in. That's what leaky gut syndrome is. So um, basically, when you have this chronic inflammation, you have chronic leaky gut and you need to repair that process. Uh, First, you need to know what the trigger is and make sure that trigger has been taken care of. Um, so uh, basically, uh, the moral of the story is the chronic inflammation is uh, causing this post-infectious IBS. Your body isn't really recovered properly. So that could be one reason. Uh, the other is the microbiome, uh, the, the good bacteria that sit in here and, and uh, sort of uh, close to the surface here um, are imbalanced. So it could be that actual bug that it caused the problem to begin with, or it could be that uh, some of the good bacteria got uh, swept away or just are not um, regrowing properly. It could be because diet changes or something like that that has occurred uh, as a result of this infection. Um, but uh, that's another reason where, uh, you know, um, there's a the part of the anti-inflammatory process that's uh, in the intestines is uh, the uh, good bacteria are communicating with the digestive cells. Uh, and uh, when, you know, there's imbalance there, that can also kind of re-trigger or uh, uh, prolong the inf inflammation as well. So those are two things to think about. And also sometimes people are just uh, nutrient deficient in certain things that aren't allowing these uh, cells to recover or that gap junction proteins are not uh, uh, able to recover properly because of nutrient deficiencies. Hopefully that was helpful in giving you a better understanding of what post-infectious IBS is and what's going on internally to trigger this process and prevent you from getting back to normal digestion. If you like the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.